There are three new arrivals at the Killam Bear Center in Lyme, New Hampshire. For now, they're confined to the barn. Nine cubs that we have will be able to come in the other side of this pen, and hopefully they'll make friends with them. See, there's already a group of cubs here living wild in the woods. Ben Killam has fenced off an eight-acre enclosure. Their only comfort comes from having friends, and then they end up eating together and sleeping together and playing together. Ben's sister, Phoebe, tends to the cubs and leads us into the woods. She tells us we're likely to find all the cubs together in one group, and indeed, a tall pine tree is loaded with bear. Their leader, Trebo, comes down to check out the newcomers. I would say that Trebo is a strong female. She'll be a good mother. She keeps track of what's what. Her personality is, she, she likes to know everything everybody's doing and that everything's all right. Phoebe says Trebo has also come to help little Alan, a fellow cub stranded in a distant tree all morning. Apparently, little Alan won't come down until his friends come help. Trebo to the rescue. It is a complex social dynamic that Ben Killam has also observed in adult bears. He calls it reciprocal altruism. Reciprocal altruism, which means a tit for a tat, uh, trading favors with a time delay, mm -hmm. and uh, with strangers. And there's a lot of uh, psychological conditions that go along with it, like friendship and gratitude and judgment and punishment and moralistic aggression. All those things exist in bears. Killam's discoveries about bear behavior are nothing short of revolutionary. But he has faced an uphill battle getting recognition from the scientific community. Killam's severe dyslexia makes it difficult for him to write scientific papers. But over time, the quality and quantity of his work has become impossible to ignore. In the very beginning, 25 years ago, when I talked about social behavior in bears, people thought I was from Mars. Uh, but the most recent uh, international bear conference I went to five or six years ago, all of a sudden, you know, I was the center of attention. Evidently, word travels. A few years ago, Chinese wildlife officials came to kill him for help with efforts to reintroduce captive-born pandas into the wild. The project is documented in the IMAX film, Pandas. They didn't have as much energy as the black bears do, so the black bears really are more challenging than the pandas to work with. But international attention hasn't altered Ben Killam's basic focus, his dyslexia, a constant challenge, but also, in Killam's view, an asset, enabling him to read animals like others read books. I was born unable to read efficiently and remember things that I read efficiently, but I have skills that other people don't have at all. It's those skills that allow me to understand bear behavior and understand the observations that I make. Mm, amazing. With encouragement and assistance from a professor at Drexel University, Ben Killam was able to earn his Ph.D. a few years ago using the observations and insights compiled in his books. We checked in with Ben again this week. He says there are 43 cubs in the center's care at the moment and more expected. A fair number of those orphaned cubs were brought to the center from Massachusetts. We'll have links to information on the Killam Bear Center on our website. And that is Chronicle for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Anthony Everett. Have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Hope to see you back here again next week. Good night, everybody.